r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill. Serious, redditors who suddenly came into wallet of money. What was your horror story of people begging for money? I once took second in a poker tournament and won $150k. There was an audience of about 200 people when it finished. Common practice was PPL ask winners for a lucky chip. I was almost mobbed by people begging for lucky chips as I left the casino. Had to be escorted by security and paid a friend $300 to follow me in their car and we drove all over town for 2 hours to make sure nobody was following me home. Wouldn't have thought of the driving part. That's pretty smart. God knows what kind of desperation lives at the fringes of those events. So I wouldn't consider it a lot of money but I won $5,000 on a scratch off that was given to me on my birthday by my aunt. It was just a $2 scratcher and obviously nobody thought I would win that much. I scratched it in front of everyone and they were all super excited for me except my aunt who demanded the ticket back because she paid for it. I even offered to split half with her. Long story short. She took me to small claims where the judge pretty much laughed and she didn't get shit. Haven't talked to her since. I even offered to split half with her. Bro. That's really generous and it sounds like she still insisted on taking it all. What a piece of shit. I unexpectedly inherited about 4 years worth of take home pay. Before I knew how much it would be. I told my best friend I'd be getting a few thousand dollars. She immediately asked me to take her on a trip to Europe. That was the biggest thing she asked for but she made other small requests as well. When the money came through and it was a lot more than I'd anticipated. I did not tell my friend. Instead. I started distancing myself from her. I also did not tell any of my other friends. I did tell my boyfriend. He did not ask for anything. I took him on a trip to Europe. Edit. Ro. My first gold. Yes. This is the best story. My grandma died a week before Christmas. And she left her house and one stroke four of her small fortune to me. The rest of the money went to my brother and my two cousins. My uncles and aunts have been a pain in my back ever since. Claiming that the money house are theirs, etc. And I've also been approached by people who I haven't seen or talked in a while. Even my ex who dumped me for some doucher bag rugby player. Started talking to me again and inviting me to places. And she's still dating the same guy. Anyway. I'm not naive enough to lend those people money or befriend even. Luckily I have good friends and my brother as advisors. If you got one stroke four and there are four cousins, including you and your brother, why do they think they deserve more? Sounds even to me. Duck that beach. So a few years out of college my girlfriend and I were living in a sort of large communal apartment with five other people, two bedrooms, two couches in the common area. I had just gotten a significant promotion at my job and that situation was exceptionally below my means. But my GF was convinced that these were her people and they were all going to become great philosophy writers and poets by living together and sharing experiences. They were all unemployed or underemployed. And experienced moochers. So I was very careful not to let them know I was saving large sums of money with the intent of moving out soon and taking my GF with me, or not. One day the other couple had an argument about rent and to try and keep them from coming to blows my GF promised them that I'd cover it for them and showed them one of my pay stubs which I guess they showed everyone else. I got home from work and walked right into an apartment meeting ambush. Where everyone else informed me that they wanted me to contribute more meaningfully and they'd put it to a vote before I got back. I told them that I was already paying for their food that they kept guilting my GF into buying for them topping up the apartment emergency fund instead of stealing from it like the rest of them. And many other things in that I wasn't going to cover other people's rent as well. The next day when I was at work. Someone went into my room and destroyed my laptop. Which was the only thing of value I owned at the time. I collected the few things I wanted to take. Told my GF I was breaking up with her. And walked out. The next day when I was at work. Someone went into my room and destroyed my laptop. Brilliant move. That was bound to convince you spend more money on them. I can give an answer although it is developing at this stage. All throughout school I was a bit of a loser. Didn't do well in class and never really cared. I used to go out all the time with my friends and would hang out with them all the time. 
After school I didn't do much other than waste time until I found my wife and wanted to start being better for her. I did a one year software development course and then got a pretty shitty job making almost nothing in my country, South Africa. When my wife got pregnant all my friends basically ghosted me as I wasn't going to be going out partying with them anymore. They wouldn't return my texts or even answer my calls. A few years down the line I landed a very high paying remote job, $200k plus, for a SF based company. The average salary for a software developer in South Africa is around $30k per year. My wife was very proud of me I think and posted a picture of me on her Facebook standing next to my new car that I had just bought. There was one guy I always had a soft spot for and decided that I would go have dinner with him and see how the last 4 years of his life treated him. We hadn't even ordered our food yet when he dropped the bomb on me that he felt that I owed him a lot of money for always being there for me and that I would be selfish to not give him some money as I had so much. I quietly just got up and left. I eventually changed my number and deactivated my social media accounts but people still harass my wife and mother to try and get some money out of me. This doesn't even go into the absolute shit I had coming from my dad's side of the family who are basically hillbillies. I'm curious about the hillbillies. Not exactly horror story. But I've always made more money than most of my friends. Some of them would hit me up for cash. But usually I only agreed to small amounts or said no. I did however have a very close friend who I really enjoyed the time we spent. But we liked to drink. So bars were our go to hang out. I usually ended up paying for the entire night. To the point where he said he wasn't comfortable hanging out because he never had the money. But. I genuinely did like just hanging and he always. Always bought the first round. That's respect. Respect for true homies. EOBV enjoyed your company too to not have felt good about you financing every outing. It means he cared about your well-being. Dope. So. I knew this girl who was a sex worker. Had known her for years and we had even briefly dated before she got into that line of work. She was always really open about what she was doing. And that she enjoyed it. Which I believed because this woman was a freak, in a good way. In fact. One of the reasons things hadn't worked out was that she was way too kinky for me. And I'm pretty open minded. She always explained it to me like this. I would be a total slap either way. So why not get paid for it and not have to work? Fair enough. I didn't question it. Fast forward like 10 years. And I had inherited a bunch of money. Not like obscenely wealthy. But enough to really change my lifestyle. And I still talk to my friend regularly. Even though we live in different parts of the country. She was one of the few people who was there for me consistently through some really dark times. And I was there for her in the same way. And I really valued her friendship. She started talking about how she wasn't young anymore. And she wasn't happy anymore doing what she was doing and wanted to change directions. You probably can guess where this was going. She had a plan that seemed pretty good. I was also in the midst of intentionally drinking myself to death. And I was pretty sure I was going to die soon. I came very close, so I didn't really care about money. I ended up giving her $10,000 that she needed to go back to school. Not alone. Just gave it to her. That really sucks. I'm sorry you lost your relationship with her. What a shitty thing to do. I inherited my beloved grandma's house alongside with some other properties. As the house and the properties are near a very rapidly developing city. Prices have skyrocketed and lead to me inheriting about 1.5 million dollars in value. That may sound awesome at first. But it truly isn't. The house is a very old brick house. Built in the late 1700s. And the properties are so small and widely distributed I can't really sell them for a good price. As the house is a listed historical building. Every little repair has to be done by state approved professionals for restoration and conservation of old buildings. Which basically doubles if not even triples the costs. I rented it out. But the rent I get is barely enough to cover the costs of repairs. Insurance etc. I am lucky if I get even by the end of the year. But as this house is where my family used to live for the last 4 generations before my dad bought the ranch and moved there with my mum. I want to keep it in the family as long as possible. I have now learned who to trust and to spot telltale signs of vultures. Don't let an old house control your life. 
The amount of time and money you spend on it will leave you worn out. The first log cabin on our farm was built in 1780. By the time I sold. It was a 15 room farmhouse with 5 outbuildings. I sold in 2006 and was able to take early retirement 10 years later. Had I kept the place I would have had to work well into my 70s. Loved the place but just not that much. My mom has this ugly football themed van. Every since I was 10 we would go around in circles about how it will be mine one day but I told her from the start I'll pass I hate vans. And football. Bought a different car and the van broke down after she put over 300k miles on it. I get my first income tax which was almost 3k and she tries to sell me the van for 2k. I tell her no and she drops it to 1000 since I can easily afford it I still refuse and less than an hour later she sends me a picture of a 1200.00 dog for sale with this is what I want for my birthday. He's in Kentucky I'll send you the address. She wanted to use my money to get a dog and was hoping to be sneaky and trick me into buying a broken ugly van to fund her multi-state trip to pick up a dream dog. She didn't speak to me for months after and still tries to sell me that post for more than it was worth when it ran. Not that you should spend anything on her but I heard you like vans and dogs so I got you this van. Old friends would only want to meet on the condition that we go out to eat and that I pay for it. I wouldn't call them friends. My friend. Got a 7k settlement from a car accident. I accidentally left the check on the corner table in the living room. My dad walks into my bedroom and asks if I can lend my mom any money. I work minimum wage retail and ask him how much does she need. He says how about half of that 7k check. It has been almost 8 years. I haven't seen any of that money back. I think you already know what I'm about to say. But you will probably never see any of that money back. When parents borrow money from children. I think in the back of their mind they sort of see it as payment for all the money they spent on you growing up. At least I think that's how they justify it. Edit. Sorry for the confusion I shouldn't have wrote this in a way to make it seem like all parents feel this way what's crazy is I grew up in a very poor family and when my parents borrowed money they always tried to make sure and pay it back when they could so why I worded it that way I don't know I guess I was just focused on that one person's comment. I apologize. Before the recession hit. My dad had a pretty lucrative small business and we lived comfortable middle class lives. He would often lend his family money since most of his sisters didn't amount to much in their lives. They would never pay him back. And often hassle him to give them money since he was so well off. After the recession hit. We took a big dive and still were able to live ok but had to sell a lot. No more insurance. And basically lived paycheck to paycheck while my dad worked 7 days a week to make ends meet. After all he's done over the years not one of them would help when we needed it. One of my uncles has even been even more well off with a car dealership. And refused to aid my father with a loan. Even though my father always pays his debts regardless of if others do the same, none of his sisters have ever repaid a cent of his generosity. I have a lot of terrible stories about them through the years. And finally he's cut them all out of his life after almost losing my mom through divorce last year, partly BC of his horrid family and how they treated her, and nearly drinking himself to death the past 3 years. They are truly terrible. Greedy people and it's all taught me a lot about the kind of person I want to be and who I want to surround myself with. Why did your uncle not want to give your dad a loan? Not sure if it really fits. As we never actually received the money in the end and I'm not too clued in on the details. But anyway. About 10 years ago or so. My grandfather called my mother one day exclaiming that he'd finally netted in excess of 1 million pounds worth of property. A big deal for my family. Of course he wasn't doing anything with it. He was always a frugal man and remained that way until the day he died. As the years went on. His health deteriorated in more ways than one progressing to the point where he needed to have full time care and ultimately ended up being put in a home. Now we currently live in Australia. My family is mostly still in the UK. My aunt who still lives there was responsible for sorting out all of his needs. Time went on and sadly he ended up passing away. As all of this was happening. She was looking into his financial details and his will and whatnot. What was peculiar was that in his state of dementia. He had apparently at some point closed all of his bank accounts and withdrawn any money in cash. How? 
I don't know. But as a result of that. What with all of the costs of supplying care to him in his home and whatnot. The banks believe that we had hidden the money somewhere and refused to help. Ducking like and subscribe.